Hey crafty people, I was commissioned to do two of these albums. The funny thing is, is I had one of these albums and I had it for like more than a year and nobody ever wanted to buy it. So I put it in my D-stash and then everybody wanted to buy it. So I sold that one and then I got commissioned to do two more. So today I'm going to show you both of those because they need to go out in the mail today. <laughs> so this is um, album number one. And this is a Knitwit Collections um, digital printable kit. And I have it in my stash from my Knitwit uh, uh, design team days. And I love it and I probably will use it more and more and more. Um, once you have a digital kit in your computer, it is yours to use repetitively as many times as you like. So... Um, all of these are, are printouts. They're already clustered for you in the collection. You just purchase it, download it, and then you print. Um, it's super easy, guys. For any of you that are on the fence about digital kits, I swear I am the least computer savvy person ever, and I can do it. So let me just show you. This is a chipboard mason jar album. And it's made for ring binding. There's a hole here in each one of the mason jars, and it's made for ring binding. But I like to put a hard binding on it. And I do have a video on how I do this. I will share it at the end of this video. So if you're interested in that, um, it was requested. So, but I put one of the uh, rolling pins here and a couple buttons and put some trims there on the binding. I put little trims at the top of each one of the mason jars, um, and let's go inside. Um, the My philosophy on both of these is that this will be much easier to use as a recipe album if each one of these is a, a pull-out. Like, you could actually pull it out. <laughs> What is going on? This is not a positive experience. And what happened is I probably put this in. Oh, I see. It's catching on the button. There we go. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, so another, you know, image from the collection. I have it adhered only at the bottom. So it keeps the um, this part from sliding all the way through. I added some gems. And I added a spoon from the collection. So this opens up and you could put your recipes in here. I kind of got down to the end and decided not to put paper here because you can put your, look at my finger, what the heck? You could put your recipe on the whole thing and just have the border. So I just didn't want it too tight to fit in there. And um, I don't know if she'll use three by five cards or if she'll cut out for magazines. If you cut out for magazines, that's like really thin and that'll not add too much bulk here. So that slides back in there and it won't slide out the bottom. Here, um, this one actually does stay in the album. This flips down and then these flip up. Um, but because it's you know, kind of tilts up. I thought it would be um, easy to read whatever the recipe is. And then back here, there is a, a pull out to write a recipe on the back. And you can put a recipe here and a recipe here, a small one. And then back here is a place for another small recipe. So then over on this side, we've got these cute, cute buttons. And this pull out with this little gingerbread girl. And I put some little buttons on her. And then this opens. And you can fit, what is it, eight? So two, four, six, eight. Or seven, because you don't want to cover up your little girl. So seven recipes in there then over here we have a uh, pocket and then this is from the collection and it does actually have buttons on the paper but I use bling and buttons 
So in the pocket, and it comes out like that, you can put a recipe on the back of this little cake. Put a recipes here and recipes here. And these, this is from the collection as well. Then here we have this really cute little sugar jar and I just added a bling and some trim there. So this pulls out and you can put a recipe here and you can put a recipe on the back as well. And then we've got this little booklet. Then we've got that same cute little, oh, so cute little girl holding up the cupcake. And then a booklet that pulls out here. Really, really cute papers. Uh, and then over here, I did print out one of the mitts and I added some buttons to it. So this is just a plain recipe card. And then this is your little booklet to put more recipes in. And these are just some recipe cards I had. I picked these up at Tuesday morning um, earlier this year and I thought, well, they match the collection. So there we go. So recipe here. I, I kind of really like how this one turned out with the different colored buttons and the red trim background and the bow with the blings. So here we go. A cup of good cheer. So if you have a long ways recipe or you have a tall ways recipe, it doesn't matter. You just put that right in there. So that is album number one. Let me tie that up. I have these already, uh, the labels printed to go in the, um, the shipping labels. So I don't want to get them mixed up. And then the second one is here and um, I think it's the same image and the binding is the same I used one of the printable bows there then here we have a pocket page right at the front of the album so a recipe can go here then we've got a recipe can go on there and there so we've got a bunch of bunch of stuff in that first pocket and then here we've got the cute little uh, cocoa cup there excuse my I don't know how that even got there so this opens up like this and then we've got this recipe card and this is one of the printables from the collection and this pulls out recipe on there and then this is good for your larger recipes because this one I think is six and a quarter. Then over here, we have another pull out and the spoon stays attached there. Oh, we've got a, an issue with a button here. There we go. I think it's snagging right here. So this one actually opens like that and then that goes back in there and then this pocket with the oven mitt and a button so place for a recipe there. 
and this opens like this. And we've got this cute, cute apron. And there is a pullout in there. And that opens like that. Tucks nicely in there. And if it's snugly enough, it's not going to fall out. This one is a little bit more loose. This has got the buttons again here. But once you get your recipes in, it's going to fit snugly. So there's a spot there and a spot there. So quite a bit of room in this pull apart. Then over here, this is our last page, and you can write a recipe on there, and then you have your booklet, the little gingerbread dude. So there we go. Those are the two albums. If you're interested in one of these, um, oh, okay. I guess I'm going to repair that before I put it away. Um, if you're interested in anything, you know, I love to do custom projects. So just reach out to me. And my information is always in the description box down below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you're inspired to get on some Christmas stuff. I actually am getting really motivated. I'm, I may, may just skip right over Halloween. So thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Bye. Hey, crafty people. <clears throat> Um, I was asked to show how I do the binding on uh, the Mason Jar mini album. And I have, I'm creating two. So here is the first one. And this is how it works with the binding. Um, these are ring bound albums. They come with a hole here for you to put a ring. And then they would just flip like that. But I like to put a binding on it so that they open like that so um, I was asked by one of my longtime subscribers so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how I do it because it's really super easy all right so first we're gonna take our one of our mason jars and you're gonna measure how long your straight edge is So, I'm going to, I'm going to go with four inches, even though you probably got a quarter inch and a quarter inch, you could probably do four and a half. Um, I'm going to go with four, four inches. So I'm going to take my heavyweight um, craft paper. and I cut a four inch piece. What I'm gonna do now, is take that four inch piece, and I'm gonna cut it to, I'm not gonna cut it, I'm gonna score it at two inches, okay? And that, will be the flap that I attach my mason jar to on this end. And I want my, um, each different mason jar, I want to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna score three quarters of an inch. And I'm just gonna, so this mason jar will go here. This one will go here, this one will go here, and then I want to score one more time. And fold this over. And I'm gonna, since I have two inches here, I'm gonna cut this to two inches. So, that's how it's going to look. You see the score lines? 
yeah, you can kind of see those score lines. That's just to help you know. There you go. You can see them better there, I think. That's just to help you know um, where you're going to put your other pieces. So we've got, this is four inches. So I'm going to take my other piece of paper that I have left over. And I'm going to cut it to four inches again. And then, so then we've got four inches this way. And I'm going to cut three strips into two inches. And I will show you that. Okay, so I have these three strips that are four inches by two inches. And I'm going to take these, and I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, and three quarters of an inch. I'm going to fold those over. Then I'm going to take this piece again, where we have our score lines. going to adhere score tape down. I hate to waste, but I am wasting because I tore that off and it didn't tear off very nicely. <laughs> so you don't want tape on this last piece right here, okay guys? I made that mistake like several times and and it's it's not not necessary and you'll just end up with a mess okay so leave this last slot with no tape on it It doesn't matter that little strip without, that's not, not a problem. Okay, so you take your first piece, make sure your three quarter inch piece is what you're putting down. Hold this up. Make sure you got it at the right spot and then push it down. And take your next one. And this is the waterfall technique. And this okay so there you go that's that's the binding now I'm gonna go ahead and attach and I'll show you I like to use my glue for this part because that way you have a little bit of wiggle room and I want to tell you you know what we're going to do? Before we do that, we'll wrap this whole piece in design paper. So we're only going to need about six inches. And then we'll do three and three quarters, okay? All right, so this is the design paper, simply because that's the piece that I had ready to go. So we're going to, oh, hold on, hold the phone. You don't really want to do that. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. why we don't want to do that yet because I have to reinforce this portion right here with um, chipboard so we're gonna just take a strip because you're gonna see a little you're gonna see a little bit of this and I'll explain it to you in a second yep 
you'll understand in just a second. And it could potentially not matter because what I did on the other one so that I didn't need paper was I wrapped my um, my trim around that so it didn't matter. But just in case, because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this one, I want to get the paper on there. But this part will have a piece of chipboard. And maybe we should just do that while we're while we're here so that you can see. So I'm going to get a scrap piece of chipboard. So I have a scrap piece. And this is four, and I think this is three, by three inches. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it just a hair under three inches by four inches. So that's our piece of chipboard. And that's going to go right on there. We're just going to do that to make it more secure and so that it will last a long, long time. All right. So then we're going to take a mason jar and put it on that side. And the reason why we made our flaps so long is because when you put your mason jar on, it's important did it not be all the way up to the edge all the way up to there so you're gonna leave it out about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch and the reason for that is it allows the book to open better if you put it all the way up to the score line to here, then the book won't want to open as well. So that is the reason for that. And don't worry, when we push that mason jar on there, it's going to squeeze that, that glue around. So you want to make sure that you've got at about the same spot for these two. There we go. And then you just take your other ones. And you could put a strip of paper on here if you want. I mean, we could just... Go ahead and do that. Cut a few of these. I mean, it's not really necessary because the craft cardstock goes so well with it that doesn't matter if a little bit of craft paper is showing but you know I just want to show you the options and this was like a real spontaneous video I just want you to know not real well thought out so okay so we're gonna take our We're going to take our mason jar and we're going to set it also 
so that it doesn't come all the way in here. You want to leave a little more than a quarter of an inch and just try to measure where your bottom is with the mason jar here. So I'm going to do this one. And this is my last mason jar chipboard album. So what I did is I took another piece of cardstock and I traced around them. So I have um, these templates for making these in the future. But I am going to save this one for right now. I'm not going to glue it onto here. And the reason is, is I'm going to use this template so that I can cut out all the paper to go on um, on all these mason jars but let me show you so see how flat that it lays okay and when you open it up of course there'd be one here that's gonna open and you could put a piece of paper here too if you want if you're funny about that little tiny strip that's gonna show without paper on it so Alrighty, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. I hope that helped. And um, thanks for watching.